and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko. Black Friday right here on Podcast and Chill. I'm Len Moleko and I am... I've never been so excited in my life to speak about anything. Like, I mean anything. As you can see in front of us, a bottle of wine. In fact, two bottles of wine. It's Black Friday and yes, the wine is black owned. And I'm with a person who makes sure that... You know, I've got such a passion for wine, right? I, I, I call it liquid poetry. Okay. Is that what it is? It is, definitely. I think there's, like they always say, wine is bottled poetry. Somebody once said that. Okay. <laughs> liquid poetry, bottled poetry. <laughs> anyway, uh, you are here, Siwela mm-hmm. Wines. Yes. Please tell us about this. I'm, 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 I'm just excited because there's wine in front of me. Okay, so this bottle of wine that you see in front of you yeah. is uh, a bottle that I made. It's my own wine, and I named it after myself. Uh, Suela is my first name, which basically means crossing over. Okay. And this is me crossing over into the wine industry, into a wine-dominated industry, into a very challenging and the most difficult and a capital-intensive industry. Uh, but because of my passion for the industry, I've decided that this is what I want to do, and this is what I'm going to go for. Because for me, it's not just bottling wine. It's not just making wine. For me, it's making a name for myself. It's me saying listen wine industry stand up Suela is here okay and okay <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> we feel you okay and yeah so i currently have the sweet blend and the dry blend and uh both wines are actually blends of a cabernet sauvignon a sangiovese a mellow marburg and a rubinet and if you it's, the style is quite similar to that of the famous Bordeaux blend. And it's an easy drinking wine. You know, it's quite easy on the palate. It's got soft, smooth tannins, which makes it a great, easy drinking wine. You can drink it any day. Anyone can drink it. Either you're a wine connoisseur or you're a wine beginner. You can certainly enjoy the wine. And, um, yeah, you get your your prominent black currant and a cigar box with pepper that will follow through the palate and also it depends like you know the notes that you get from the wine it depends on what you're familiar with yeah. but i tend to pick up some spicy notes you know from the wine and yeah it's just an easy drinking wine and i recommend that people pair it with an african cuisine or you know a normal typical south african bra or just on its own all right, so I'm somewhere in the middle. I'm not a connoisseur. I'm not a beginner. Because mm-hmm. yeah, you're a wine I'm, lover. I, I love. I I absolutely love <laughs> wine. But <laughs> apart from obviously getting into this industry, which is very difficult, uh, the alcohol industry as a whole is mm-hmm. difficult. Mm-hmm. But I feel like the wine industry mm-hmm. is even more difficult. Yeah. Why did you get into it? I got into it because it was the only thing that I'm passionate about. It is the only thing that I'm passionate about. And frankly speaking, it is the only thing I know. I mean, I studied the wine industry. I still do, which I aim to get my Master of qualifi- uh, master of Wine qualification in the yeah. wine industry. Oh, so you go to school um, for making wine? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so for me, like I said, it's the only thing I know and it's the only thing that I'm passionate about. So I thought, you know what, I understand the the challenges that will come with me being in the wine industry. You know, it's, yeah, it's one hell of a trip and it's, yeah, it's something that I'm aware of, but it's something that I always wanted to do and... For me, it's not just about me having my own wa- a bottle of wine. I also dream of having my own winery where I can do everything. And I can also give opportunities to fellow young black people who are interested in the wine industry. Okay, cool. So, I go to a bottle store. I see a bottle of wine. I pick it up. I pay. I go home. And I indulge, right? But people don't necessarily understand the processes of before there was even a bottle before there was even the labeling what do you go through to end up with the bottle where it is here or at a bottle store or a chain store for that matter okay so obviously like as if you are a brand owner it has to be registered as a company it has to be registered as a trademark and you have to produce the wine and their simple process on the, on, on the trademark part um it's, it's been a very contentious issue for a lot of people, mm, right? Mm. Why is it so important to trademark? 
it's important to trademark your pro, your, your your enterprise name or your trade your trading name yeah. because today I can sell I think a lot of people do that without realizing the the, the consequences that will come with that I produce a bottle of wine and I, I, I pick a name and I'm like oh I want to call it Suela and I call it Suela and then I sell it and then I have a logo that's very nice and people love it yeah. and for months people for years people are buying the wine they love the wine they love the label five years later somebody else designs the same well similar product and uses the same i mean siwela is a commonly known name i mean a lot of people use it yeah a lot of people have that name as their name say name whatever and then somebody decides i want to have my own wine and i'm going to call it siwela because it's my say name they've got the right to that but now you find that you have a bottle of wine that has been on the shelves for a very long time that has been selling for years yeah but you have not trade you did not trademark that you know and then I have the right to that because it doesn't belong to you. If you didn't trade market, it does not belong to you. But right now, if this belongs to me, because no one else can ever produce a bottle and call it Siwela. And at the same time, you can't even call it Siwela La, because I can still say, listen, it's similar to what I've produced. It's similar to what I own. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you're literally trying to copy what I did. So that's the importance of making sure that your, the name of your whatever is you did you did go through the trademark so process. In, in in what you're talking about about the trademark thing uh in the case that it so happens that you call your wine siwela you don't trademark it i come out of nowhere i trademark the name is there a chance that you would be able to overturn the trademark that i have done even though you produced the bottle first it's all about who did like on paper who owns it because remember when you apply for the trademark they have to search is it available and if it's not available if it's not listed and if it's not registered that means it's available that means it does not exist at all okay so it means if it's available or it's listed rather and i come in and i try register that name I am not going to get it. You're not going to get it. That means it's taken. Even though some people do register, like some people would want to be in the industry, have brands, and you register a name, and then you never go into that business, and then you register it. You can't use it. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting Mm -hmm. world of business. Mm -hmm. So as we were saying, um, okay, cool. You come up with a name, uh, you register it, you go trademark. Yeah. Then... Where do the processes go from there? So the process is making wine. So there are alternatives of making a product, you yeah. know. So either you make it yourself. You do, if you've got the skills to make the wine yourself, you make the wine yourself. Or rather you partner with a producer that will make the wine for you. Yeah. And yeah, so basically the process of wine making is quite simple. And it's quite a natural process that has been in existence since the days of Jesus. So the process Amen involves... To that. <laughs> The process involves crushing grapes and literally letting the natural process occur, which is fermentation. And at a particular stage, the process will be completed and you basically mature and you uh, bottle your wine and you label your wine and you take it out and you sell it. Taking it out and selling it. I think with most alcohol brands, I've kind of picked up, well, those that are not prominent, Mm. it's the distribution that becomes a problem. Yes. How difficult have you found that with your wine? I think um, it's a very important aspect that a lot of people need to be aware of, especially if you're planning to go into the industry. It's, it's no point producing something you can't distribute. Yeah. So basically, it's no point producing something you can't sell because it's very difficult. Distribution requires a lot of work, and that means... And in the wine industry, it's a lot... There's a lot of brands out there. You know, the competition is tough. I can tell you for myself, uh, I'm a young brand and uh, self-funded, which means that if I need to compete with other brands that have been in the business, that are well established, and just for people to buy a bottle of my wine or six bottles of my wine a day, it's quite difficult. And that means I need to hire people to go in store and promote my wine. And I still need to pay them whether they've sold the bottle or they have not sold the bottle. So distribution is very, it's very expensive and it's very difficult. And if you can't distribute, you will not last in the business because people need to get hold of your product before you can actually stand a chance to create a sustainable and a very strong brand. But you can't, you, it's difficult to distribute if you don't have the finance for it, if you don't have the, 
what is the capacity to distribute now in terms of like social media um e-commerce there's a couple of businesses that we speak up that we speak with on on, on the show mm. and they speak about e-commerce being like the next best thing you don't mm. have to go to a store you can just go online and order yeah. isn't that some way of distribution or it is. is that more difficult than going to the conventional way of like put it on a shelf there at a spa or a pick and pay i think e-commerce it's very easy and it works best for producers like myself if i were to list my product at any other retail store that means i'm going to sell them at a lower price yeah. so they can sell it at a certain price and that is one thing that people need to understand just because you see a bottle of wine at whatever at that range doesn't mean that's how much the bottle is worth it's just how retail stores work and if i were to sell online i can literally make the certain profit that i want which means that e-commerce is quite effective for producers because now you're also cutting off the the middleman. The, yes, the middleman. Yeah. You're cutting off the middleman to say, listen, this is from me, the producer, and to you, the cons- consumer. And obviously, nowadays, it's quite easy with the social media, with the internet, that has made it quite easy for us as young brands, as whatever, trying brands out there yeah. to sort of market and, and reach a whole lot of people. I mean, with social media, whoever is sitting who is sitting on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, they've got access to the information or the content that you're feeding them with regards to your product. I can't wait to indulge on your wine mm-hmm. right now. But before I get into that, when the first bottle came, I would like to think you were the first person to have a sip. Yeah. How did that taste? Well, I, I felt, I've, I've been drinking a lot of wine and uh, I felt like the wine was good I, th- I felt like the wine was the best out of what i've tasted maybe yeah my, my 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 thinking was compromised but yeah i tasted like something that was quite different from anything else that i've ever tasted yeah considering that it it, it tasted like a you know there was just never anything that i could pick up that i felt like this is off you know because um you know when you drink wine Yes, it's very. <laughs> <laughs> I drink a lot of wine. I do drink a lot of wine. Yeah, so it's very important to understand the quality of the wine you're drinking. Yeah, and the quality can always be assessed by, you know, like the whole four-step wine tasting ritual. No. Okay, let's do it. I quick. literally go to a bottle store, buy a bottle of wine, and drink it. But like me, there's people who actually don't know the four-step tasting. Mm. What do you call it again? The first ritual steps of there tasting we wine. Go. Please school us. Okay, we'll do it very quickly. So this is what happens, right? So wine is wine. Yeah. Produced in different regions, different by different winemakers, and yeah, it can only taste different, but slightly, unless it's a very bad wine, okay. and that is just something we shouldn't be drinking. But otherwise, anything else would be like your tannins and your alcohol percentage and the style of the wine. Yeah. So that will depend on you as a wine consumer. What do you prefer? Well, obviously that we can't debate. If you like white wine, you're a white wine drinker. If you like red wine, you're a red wine drinker. Do you become specific or can you be like cross? I like white then, red then, or is it like specifics? I think you should be enjoying any kind of wine because wine is to be enjoyed with different occasions. Okay. Like... I enjoy drinking red wine, but on a sunny day, it makes sense to drink something like a sparkling wine or a a rosé or a white wine. Okay. You know, and uh, in the afternoon or during dinner, depending on what you're eating. And yeah, or in winter, you should be drinking some red wine. Okay, cool. Yeah. The four steps. Four steps. Yes. So it's very, very important to understand what you're drinking. And as you drink your wine... So that, you know, sometimes we shouldn't be buying things that we shouldn't be buying and paying a lot for what we shouldn't be paying for. So this is what happens. You pour your wine in your glass and you have to check, obviously, to see if there isn't anything in there that's floating. So it has to be as clear as possible. Okay. And you're also looking at the color. The color tells you that it's a red wine. And yeah, it's quite. By just looking at it, you can tell it's a white wine. Uh, and most dry, most dry reds actually tend to look thick through yeah. the through the glass. Yeah. Is that intentionally done? Because if you're gonna have a 
sweet rosé or a sweet wine mm. the, the the color tends to become a tad bit lighter yeah I th- that's just uh, the fermentation duration and that's just also like the tannins and wine that give that wine that intensity in oh, terms of color okay yes. makes sense so yeah. that's made intentionally yes like oh. your rosé rosé most rosés rosés are made from uh, red grapes and they just limit or like for example like the color comes from the the duration at which the grapes are kept in contact with the wine so they will keep the wine in contact with the grape skins like for two hours or four hours then it gives it that pinkish color yeah you know yeah and then that's it so now this is what you do you check your color and then you swell because as you swell, the flavors get to evaporate. Okay, you know? yeah. So it gets to go into the air and you swell and then you sniff. But sniffing is very important because the first thing that you're sniffing should tell you is how the quality of the wine is. Yeah. You can always tell if the wine is a bad wine, you're going to smell certain things that are just all over the place. Okay. Then you know, no, I'm about to taste shitty wine. Yeah. You shouldn't even be drinking it. And after that, you basically have to, if you're like into that kind of a thing, you ask yourself what kind of fruits does the wine remind you of. And those, that's what we, co- that's what we call the notes. Yeah. You know, the tasting notes, like your black, um, your black currant, your strawberries in terms of red wine and all those things. And then after that, you just simply drink. Sounds pretty easy. Sounds pretty easy. <laughs> it's quite easy. <laughs> so I, I I've, I've had a taste. Uh, I'm loving this. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I'm a big wine fan myself. Mm-hmm. So for those who are looking to get a bottle of Siwela wine, mm. how do they go about doing that? All you have to do to get a bottle of uh, Siwela, you just have to go to the website www.siwelawines or so coza. Submit your details, and we will get in contact with you. And we'll get to deliver your wine. As simple as that. As you sit at home, while you're busy with your daily schedule, we deliver your wine right through your doorstep. Well, it's as easy as that. And yeah. uh, we'll put the website right here at the bottom, www.siwelawines.co.za. And man, you can uh, yeah, kind of be like me and enjoy this one because <laughs> it's, it's hell of a good wine. But one thing I need to ask though, right, before we get out of here, this is like my parting shot. Mm-hmm. Is it true what they say about wine? That it is a uh, aphrodisiac. I think that's very interesting. But I'll tell you why people say it's an aphrodisiac. I believe personally, as a person, besides being a wine ex- exp- expert or whatever, yeah. that drinking any alcohol affects people differently. So wine is still alcohol at the end of the day. How you react and respond to alcohol it's up to you, right? It doesn't work as an aphrodisiac to me. And then the other fact, the fact, scientific fact, yeah. is that wine literally helps you relax. You know? Your blood runs faster. Uh, and then that's what contributes to people thinking that it's an aphrodisiac. Because imagine now you are relaxed, which means you're less, your mind is not work like your mind is relaxed as well, your body is relaxed, and your body, your blood flow is faster than normal. Oh. Which makes okay. you. So, yeah, it's a. Yeah. If the blood is running. Eh, blood running and you're relaxed. It's definitely an aphrodisiac. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Siwela Wines, uh, Siwela, thank you very much for joining thank us you, on Podcast Thank you, thank you, thank you so Black much. Black Friday edition, man, yo, the throats are opened, the throats are opened, and uh, you can open yours, she gave you the details, www.siwelawines.co.za, make sure you get yourself a bottle, because this is hella good, I, I don't even think I want to say goodbye, man, because I want to finish my glass, so yeah, see you on the flip side, Black Friday, Podcast and Chill. <laughs> thank you, this was really lovely. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Lynn Moleko.